So Audio Note is one of those companies that has lasted a long time in the audio world. And the reason I had my eyes on personally for Audio Note was because a lot of my friends who own it absolutely rave about Audio Note's sound quality. And to go further, there's like a cult like following in some parts of the world, like Japan and in the UK. So, all people that have heard Audio Note, well, not all people, but you know what I'm talking about. People that like Audio Note, they hear it and they fall in love with it and they can't go back. And so, the saying goes once you hear Audio Note, there is no going back. So, I wanted to test that theory to see how good. The audio note is. And so I have a few audio note components in here to test out and try for myself. So you'll be hearing about audio note you know, here and there on my channel、uh, going forward. But today we have one of my favorite units, the Tonmeister、uh, 300B integrated amplifier. Now, this unit, right off the bat, talking about the aesthetics, I absolutely dislike it. it it's dreadful. It, That's one of the things about Audio Note is that the, the look, the aesthetic is just dreadful. I, I personally don't like it. And the reason being is, as you can probably see, it's a very chunky, big box unit. And there's really not much thought that goes into the aesthetics, as far as I can see, you know, for an esteemed brand that you know, involves luxury and high end price tag. This thing is $19,000 US dollars. And for $19,000 US dollars, I would like to have seen you know, a little bit more thought go into how this would look in someone's listening room or in their living room. you know.、Um, but unfortunately, it's a shame. It's,、um, it's not really clicking with me, especially the silver unit here. They do have a black unit, which I think will look nicer. But at the end of the day, it's still a big, clunky box and it's quite heavy. And I'm just not a fan of the looks. So that's that. Now, in terms of the volume knob,、um, it's quite smooth. So you have four knobs here, which I like. It satisfi satisfies my OCD because it's four symmetrical, right?、Um, I do like the feeling of the volume knob. It is quite smooth, and you do feel quite nice. And you might be wondering well, that doesn't really matter because you have a remote, right? It's an, surely it's a $19,000. Unit, it must have a remote. It does not have a remote.、Um, so there's that. And when I first realized that this unit costed $19,000 US dollars with no remote, I was,、uh, I was just about ready to dropkick this thing off a cliff and call it a day. But here we are. Gotta, gotta try it first. So the volume knob feels quite nice.、Um, I don't really mind it. It's, it's actually quite satisfying. I would keep wanting to turn it. It has like nice resistance to it.、Um, the balance control right underneath the volume knob is quite nice. It's to balance the left and right channel so that if you don't have your speakers optimally set up, or if, you know, for example, you have one speaker in an odd place, I've seen that many times in people's setups, then you can change it so that you get nice center imaging. And then on the other side, we have the function, which is the inputs. We have four RCA inputs, and I'll show you that in a minute in the back. And we have record. Now, this is for recording devices, so you can record with this unit. I don't know why you would, but the option is there. And of course, this is the line source. So you can see my shoe line 300B Tonmeister,、uh, single ended line integrated amplifier. And we'll talk about the tube that goes inside this unit as well in a minute and how much power and all that. But、um, this is a tube integrated amplifier, which means that it has a preamp capability. So you can control volumes, obviously, and it has an amplifier. But you still need a DAC or source with it, like a streamer and a DAC, or a turntable and a phono stage, and so on. They do have a silver upgrade version, and they also have a phono version, which has a phono built in that comes with. Extra tubes for the phono section, but those cost more, and that's not the topic of this video. But just to let you know, there are upgrade versions. This is just the line source, which, quite frankly, I like quite a bit. But I would like to try the phono stage in the future. Now, let's take a look at the back. Okay, so here's the back of the unit, and here is where your three prong power cable would go into. 
And here is the speaker binding post. And let's talk about the binding post as well as the connectors here for the RCA first. So these are, as you can see, and not very conventional off the shelf kind of posts um, or connectors. And that's because they are made by AudioNote. So AudioNote is one of those companies that make a lot of their components in house to satisfy you know, the whole tuning of what they're going for. So that's kind of impressive because there's not many companies that I know of that really is able to control every stage into the production in terms of the components that go inside. And we'll see that in a minute when we open this thing up. Inside, you're gonna see a lot of the same typical thing where you know, AudioNote has their own components. And they're kind of known for that. So that's one thing I like is that these are uh, really nice binding posts. They're really high quality. I can tell just from touching it, it's like nice. And they're minimalistic. They're, you know, they're not chunky, big connectors. And so you can connect speaker cables quite easily. It will accept both spades and banana plugs. Quite nice. It has the negative where it's marked as zero and you have the four ohm and eight ohm tab. Now, as you can see, it doesn't really have a right or left uh, label on the binding post for the speaker binding post. So I would like to have seen that, but it's kind of intuitive because you do get right and left indications on both the uh, you know, recording section, which is right here, tape in, tape out, which if you're not recording, not really a concern for you, but that is there for connecting with record recording devices. And then what you're concerned about is the inputs. So, so you do not get an XLR balanced or anything like that um, because this is a tube integrated amplifier. Uh, mostly with tube units, you do get single ended inputs, but not really you know, XLR, which is fine. Uh, you do get four, which is quite a bit of inputs. So if you have more than one source like I do, like CD player, turntable, or a reel to reel deck and a streamer, then they, they can all be connected to this all uh, four inputs right here. So I think that's a nice number of inputs for this, um, this unit. So the clunky big black cover comes off and you're left with this beautiful internal of the AudioNote Tonmeister line, line, Maestro line. And I have to say, looking at the internals of this thing makes me feel a lot better about the $19,000 US you know, dollar price tag than looking at it from the outside. Internally, it's beautiful. All of it is, if not all of it, most of it is audio node components from the transformers, big heavy transformers, which makes this thing pretty darn heavy to the audio note capacitors, which I absolutely love. They're very tasteful when it comes to tube amplifiers. It really opens up sound stage and so on. Smooth, smooth, smooth sound stage. Love it. And from the wiring, clean wiring, everything is speaking to me. You know, seeing these QC quality control pass um, on each board really, you know, assures me that everything has been tested because this is a tube unit. You want the assurance that it's you know gone through a lot of quality control and proper quality control. So that's all been done here, which I appreciate. But I don't know what you guys, audio note guys, were thinking putting 20 screws, I counted, 20 small tiny screws to hold the top cover. You do realize that this is a tube amplifier, tube integrated amplifier, and with any tube sources or amplifiers or integrated amplifiers or pre-amplifiers, any tube units, you want to be easily able to get to the tubes because when they expire, when it's time for them to be switched, you want to get to it easily. And also when you want to switch it, tube rolling for people like me that wants to switch to different tubes for different sound characteristics, fine tune little things, you want to be able to get to it easily. Despite this, you decide to put a, not, an, not only an ugly black cover, but put 20. That's ridiculous. I think that's the most screws I've seen on a tube unit. That makes it tremendously hard to unscrew and screw back on the top cover. Quite frankly, I don't think I'm gonna screw back all the 20 covers until it's gonna be returned. I'm gonna keep maybe you know, four on each side, two on top, so that I don't have to keep unscrewing and screwing every time I switch tubes or want to take a look inside. So pain in the ass. I mean, this is made in England. It's supposed to be elegant. Um, far from elegant, which is a shame. And ironically, the most elegant thing about this unit is the back where nobody sees the unit. It's the back where it's like a nice piano gloss finish 
which again, the back is the most elegant part of this design aesthetically, which I just don't understand. It's not very well thought out. I don't think people talked about the aesthetics of this at Audio Note to a degree um, where it really needed to for 19,000 US dollars. But again, back to the internals. Um, the internals are gorgeous. Like I said, it, it, nothing to complain about. Everything is soldered on beautifully. And even the solder, quick information here, is audio note solder. So everything, every step of the way, they're doing it properly and they're doing it their way. And they're known for that. They're known for that culture. And as, you know, entitled as that sound, it's true that when something is made out of passion, out of culture that has been dedicated for centuries, then definitely you see and kind of appreciate the sound characteristics that come from each component that has been basically made meticulously for a unit like this. So I do appreciate that. And hopefully it transfers to the sound quality that we'll talk about here in a minute because it's got a long way to go to please me in terms of aesthetics. And it's gonna have to please me a lot in sound quality for me to even remotely recommend this um, unit because aesthetically it's atrocious. And quite frankly, I would take the top cover off to show the internals to make me feel better looking at this thing. Um, the tubes are 300B. So two 300B tubes right here. And then we have the 5UGB tube right here. And then you have ECC82 or equivalent 12AU7. And on the right here, you have the 5687 tubes. So thankfully they are using good quality tubes that you can easily buy and upgrade. And also there's only one, two, three, four, five, five tubes in total, including the output tubes, which is not a whole lot of tubes. So even if you change the entire thing, it's not gonna cost you as much as changing some amplifiers out there that cost a lot to change so many tubes. I've seen like 11 tubes on one amplifier and that is crazy. Well, 11, yeah, about 11 tubes on one amplifier and that is crazy amount. So I like to see minimal tubes as possible for our wallet and they've done that here. So that's nice to see. Again, if you have phono added to this um, phono line or the silver upgraded line, there is more tubes, but it's maybe two or three more tubes from my understanding. So not too many tubes. I like that quite a bit. And we'll definitely be changing and tube rolling this unit. And for that reason, I don't think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave the top cover off for now. So with that, this unit outputs eight watts of power into eight ohms or four ohms. And that's not a lot of power, uh, but I've heard good things about audio note power ratings and how they can power things deceivingly well, even with just eight watts of power. So we'll definitely check that out and talk about that as well. So yeah, let's talk about the sound. Again, at this point, it better be damn good. Wow, wow. So I, I'm, I am very happy with what I heard for the past few months with the Audio Note Tonmeister. Totally contrary to the first impressions with the build quality and the aesthetics that I had problems with, this is the most elegant sound that I've heard. The sound itself, I truly now understand why you cannot go back after hearing an Audio Note product. It's just that good. And it's not good in the sense that it's you know, the most technicality you know, masterpiece. If you want that, there's other amplifiers like the Benchmark AHB2 or the Gato Monoblocks or Burson Monoblocks. There's many amplifiers out there that has good performance in terms of measurements and technicality wise as well. But this is something totally out of the ordinary, totally out of the ordinary in the sense that it doesn't care about the te it doesn't care about the technicalities. It doesn't care for them whatsoever. Instead, it focuses solely on musicality, the reproduction of music as musical as possible, and it embodies everything I like about tube amplifiers and more. It is simply the most musical experience I've had, and this is with virtually any speaker that the the Tonemeister can drive it. Right, it's only eight watts of power, but surprisingly, it can drive a, a quite a lot of speakers, even though you think you may not be able to drive it. And we'll get to that in a minute. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I'm truly excited, but 
let's start with the base. So the base isn't going to be for everyone. And that's where I want to really address this because while this amplifier really spoke to me emotionally and the musicality was amazing, you have to understand that everyone has different taste and the technicality people, people that want a punchy, dynamic, you know, visceral chest pounding bass isn't going to be satisfied with what the audio note tone meister gives um, to the speakers. Instead, what you do get with the bass is surprisingly amazing control down into the lowest frequencies, I would say down to 20 hertz, no problem. It controls it, it finesses it, and you get this linear extension, a very smooth, linear, textured, nuanced bass in your room. It's truly a room, room filling sound. And I use that word quite a bit because I like that room filling sound and this does it the best I've heard. Now with bass, people like different types of bass, but I'll describe the bass of this amplifier as kind of equivalent to an open baffle uh, subwoofer. It loads the room in a way where the bass is everywhere. Bass is rumbly, but not in a muddy way, but it's just very linear. It dissipates really fast, but at the same time, you feel that bass. It's almost as if you have a subwoofer, which is quite impressive considering that there's this eight watts per channel and a tube amplifier. What it doesn't do is a punchy, fast, dynamic bass, visceral bass. It doesn't do that. So if you're expecting this to punch the hell out of your speakers, um, then that's not what you're gonna get here with the bass. Again, the bass, truly remarkable. And it's not the first thing that you notice because it's something that you notice as you listen more and more to this equipment with your speakers. Now, into the mid-range. Now, the mid-range is majority of what we listen to, and this is where the audio note Tone Meister really spoke to me. My God, the texture, the voices, the nuances, the accuracy of the tonal characteristics it's not the most clear sounding amplifier. It's not the technical, you know, technicality wise, the most um, analytical or you know, detail oriented at all. But there's something about this mid range. The mid range just smooth. Everything I like about tube amplifiers, smooth as a butter. Yet it has nuances. It has details. It comes through. It never gets bright, but it's able to control the mid range in such a way that it feels like there is a hol hologram in front of me when the singer is singing. It feels like I have hologram of the singer, of the guitar, of the instruments around me when I listen to this integrated amplifier, which is truly remarkable. And Tonmeister, you know, first I read it as Tonmeister, and quite ironically, tone is really, really good on this um, integrated amplifier. And there's musicians around the world that you know is ambassadors for Audio Note, and they're very well connected with music as a brand itself. So I truly understand why some brands really have no problem standing behind this brand because their instruments must sound amazing with the Audio Note, and I can I can guarantee that because when I play guitar, when I play any instrument or vocals, anything that contains in that mid range is just turned into absolute bliss and magic into a hologram. Now, lastly, the high frequency. Now the high frequency, again, not the end of detail, not in the end of, um, you know, technicality, but again, the high frequency is sparkly. It has sweetness that I talk about with tube amplifiers, but it has, it does it in such an elegant way where I don't feel any brightness whatsoever, but I hear the thing, but I hear, you know, the space in between that thing so vibrantly that I don't feel like it's a note that's coming through, but an actual snare. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you hear a speaker, at least for me, and I hear like a snare or a high frequency note, for example, I don't feel that it's really real to me. Now you've heard me say like the mid range and the guitar and the saxophone sounded real to me, and so the vocals as well, but I bet you, you've never heard me say that cymbals or high frequencies sounded real. High frequency notes, you know, instruments that contain to the higher frequencies, to me, sound always like a note to me. 
This is perhaps one of the few times where I can say confidently that it actually sounds like a snare. And the difference is when you hear it from a speaker, you tend to be like, hmm, okay, that's a snare, but you know, it sounds like a snare, but it doesn't seem like it's in the room, like a guitar or a vocal would be uh, with good speakers. But in, with the Tonmeister, when you hear that snare, it sounds like it's in the room. And what I mean by that is when I hear a real snare in my room or elsewhere, you, you, don't, you don't get that brightness. Like it doesn't sound splashy or it doesn't sound um, bright or aggressive to you. It, Cause it dissipates almost kind of um, in, in a segmented way. Instead of, you know, a quick snare, it goes snare, 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 snare. So it sounds a little bit more forgiving to our ears in real life situations when you actually hear a snare, you know, in a concert or in a venue or what have you. Anyways, enough about the snare. So overall presentation wise, this is definitely not a neutral sounding amplifier. The mid range definitely has a meaty, warmer tone to it. Um, the bass has a warm, textured, uh, extended linear kind of control to it. The high frequency definitely isn't forward sounding. It's a little bit laid back, you can argue. And most importantly, I enjoy the heck out of it when I hook up the Tonmeister to virtually any speaker. Now, talking about any speaker, let's talk about this really quickly before I get to the sound stage, which is just remarkable on this amplifier. With speakers, as long as this amplifier can drive it, remember it's eight watts per channel. So in a small to medium sized rooms, you would be okay with most speakers around 87, you know, 88 dB in sensitivity, one meter, one watt. Uh, it was even able to drive the Typhons, which is a CSS audio and collaboration between me. And I just hooked it up because I wanted to see how, how it does with, you know, my speakers, my pl collaboration. And it's one of my favorite combinations. It, it, indeed, the only shame is that because it's an eight watt amplifier, small to medium sized rooms, I've tested in both, sounds perfectly fine. I can get to cranking levels. But the only shame is that if it gets to bigger rooms, much larger rooms, then it's definitely not going to be able to draw, drive it to rocking levels. So remember that as long as it's able to drive it, ideally you want a pretty sensitive speaker like the uh, Ogi that I just reviewed, which I had it with the Tonmeister. I mentioned that in that review as well. Well, wonderful speaker, single driver, uh, very coherent, but it kind of lacks a little bit of um, meatiness in the mid range because it's a single driver. But when you hook it up to something like the Tonmeister, it just adds that meatiness to it, opens up the sound stage, and boom, we go. It's just absolutely astonishing. Usually when I talk about matching with an amplifier to a speaker, I usually talk about you know, certain speakers that work and certain speakers that don't work. The only limitation with this amplifier is the wattage and can it drive your speakers? If it can, and the answer is you're in a small to medium sized room with a 87 dB, 88 dB sensitivity-ish, then the answer is probably yes. And if that's the case, then this will do absolute wonders with every speaker. And every time I hook up this Tonmeister, it has that bloom effect. It has, it lends itself to that kind of mid-range characteristic and it just makes the speaker sound that much more musical to me. Now, I do have to say, I did test out more difficult to drive speakers like the Kef LS50 Meta, which is about 85 dB sensitivity and the uh, Q Acoustics bookshelf speakers. This is the flagship bookshelf speakers behind me. And I was just testing it out as a last minute thing. This is about 84 dB in sensitivity. So that is quite insensitive, inefficient. So it, technically a speaker like this requires a lot of power to drive it. And in my room, which is about a small to medium sized room, I would say, and with the Tonmeister, no problem. It can drive it to reasonably loud levels. Now, if I want to really party and crank it up, probably not, but for the most part, it lends itself to that beautiful mid range, beautiful sound stage, beautiful tonality of the Tonmeister. So absolutely loved it. And honestly, one of the most musical kind of piece that I have in here so far, it is simply 
a masterpiece when it comes to tuning. I truly now understand why people love it. Now, the last reason and the biggest reason, last but not the least, this Tonmeister is an absolute masterpiece in musicality because it does soundstage perfectly. And I'm talking about extending past the room boundaries, filling the room, holographicness, atmospheric, and I talk about this with tube amplifiers, but this does it to an extreme. When you hook up a technicality masterpiece amplifier like the Benchmark AHB2 or Gato Monoblox or what have you, any solid state amplifier or any tube amplifier for that matter, and then switch it to the Tonmeister, immediate, the, the effect is immediate. The airiness, the spaciousness, the sound staging, absolutely wonderful. It lends itself to a room filling sound, not a localized wall of sound, but a surrounding, atmospheric, just beautiful blooming sound. And just the sound alone, just the sound alone, I would say $19,000 is a bargain. I've heard amplifiers that cost heaps amounts more, five, 10 times more, I don't care, that does not have this blooming effect, that doesn't have this tonality, that doesn't have this much musicality packed into a integrated amplifier. But again, $90,000 is a lot of money and aesthetic wise, I would kick it off the cliff anytime, you know, any chance I get. But after hearing it, I dare not because this is a true masterpiece. Now, if you truly want to take this amplifier even further, there is something called tube rolling, obviously. So this is a tubes that I tried. I tried it with the Western Electric Pusvein tubes, this, this is the one-to-one -one by Pusvein 300B, and it's a pretty affordable in the tube, tube world, but pretty high esteemed and um, high quality. And I've tried this on several 300B amplifiers and found it to be smooth, engaging, opens up the soundstage, soundstage even more on some integrated or tube amplifiers. So I decided to try it on the Tonmeister and I was not disappointed. I tried a few other ones, but this one was the best one that I found. Of course, I didn't try the original Western Electric, which I would have loved to, but funds are running short and I did not have time to get those in just yet, but we'll hopefully test that out in the near future. Um, with the Pusvein 300B Western Electric one-to-one, -one, I would say if I have to quantify it, a little bit more soundstage, about five, 10, five to 10%, depending on the track, uh, in terms of how open the soundstage was. So the mid-range was a little bit more smoother. It wasn't too smooth to where it felt like everything was smeared, but things did come through, but it was just a little bit more uh, smoother on the edges. So if you like that, then the 300B tubes from Presvane, definitely worth it for a $19,000 amplifier. I think it definitely added something there, especially that extra depth and soundstage uh, width as well. Five to 10%, depending on the track increase is quite a bit in my opinion, uh, definitely when it comes to tube upgrades. So I definitely noticed something there right off the bat. And for the rest, I just stayed with whatever came with the integrated amplifier because it, quite frankly, I tried a few other ones like Millard and Brimer and so on, which all added some different characteristics, but I really liked what I heard with the 300B Western Electric Pusvein matched with whatever was already in the amplifier. And that was the Pusvein 12AU7 and the JAN 5687 and the Electro Harmonics 5UGB. So that's pretty much it for me, but I think this is one of those situations that very rare situation where I hated the aesthetics, but I absolutely love the sound to a degree where I may even consider this as my, one of my references when it comes to musical amplifiers or tube amplifiers in general, bar none, I absolutely loved it. And despite the looks, I still may get one, but probably in a black unit because a silver unit is just aesthetically atrocious to my eyes. But overall, I absolutely have to agree. Um, I see why there's a cult following in some parts of the world, and you can consider a Korean Canadian as part of that cult following from now on, as I am truly, truly a fan of the audio note sound now. Now I do have to say that going forward, I do hope that audio note take this video a little bit seriously, this feedback a little bit seriously. Again, I'm not here to, you know, bash on the aesthetics and 
you know, make you look bad. I absolutely love the sound and I report it as such. I just hope that they take this video with, as, as an honest feedback and consider changing their aesthetics to match with whatever the consumer feels a little bit more appropriate for, you know, their living spaces. Because isn't, it is not just me, I've talked to a few people and they all absolutely hate the aesthetics, but they love the sound. So hopefully they'll take that feedback uh, and do something with it in the near future. So aside from that, hopefully this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please click the like button on this video. It helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. And make sure to subscribe for more audio videos just like this. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time.